This is FirstCoast.tv. We find ourselves here, we find ourselves here with James uh, Hofstadt, and he's just written a wonderful book about a brigadier general that served in the Civil War, and uh, we're going to ask him some questions. So, who is this brigadier general? What was his name? His name was Martin Davis Hardin. He was born in 1837 and died in 1923 here in St. Augustine. Mm -hmm. He was a friend of Lincoln's. He was a protege of Lincoln's. He was a four-time wounded hero, but even more importantly, he was a man of faith, and he was a convert to Roman Catholicism. Interesting. Mm -hmm. In all your research, now the title of the book is, is, what is the title of the book? The title is Lincoln's Bold Lion, The Life and Times of Brigadier General Martin Davis Hardin. Mm -hmm. And in a, it's, a, it's a story of his life, but it's also a moving picture of almost a century in American history. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was there at crucial events. He knew some of the most prominent and significant individuals. President Lincoln mm -hmm. was a friend. Right. And mentor, right. uh, and many other names. When he was at West Point, Robert E. Lee was the superintendent. Wow. Before the war came, he was briefly an aide-de-camp to Robert E. Lee, who was then in the United States Army, right. at Harper's Ferry, mm -hmm. where abolitionist John Brown had yes. tried to incite a slave rebellion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was there. He right. was there at Gettysburg. Right. He was there in Washington when the president was killed. He was in Chicago during the Great Fire. He was there nursing Tad Lincoln in 1871, the son, of the son, the favorite son of President Lincoln, who sadly died mm -hmm. uh, at age 19. Right. General Hardin and his wife nursed him in those final days. Right. I, you know, the place was quite packed here. Now, why did you hold this dissertation about the book here at Mission Nombre de Dios? Because uh, if in a biography, my goal was to give a picture of the man. And you could not give an accurate picture of General Hardin unless you addressed his spiritual inner self. And he was a, as they said at his eulogy here in St. Augustine in 1923, a soldier, a gentleman, and a Christian. Right. And he converted during the war in 1864 after his exactly. third serious wound, which cost him an arm. Right. And he became a Roman Catholic, and he became a very strong, devout Roman Catholic, and it played a tremendous role in his life. Yeah, and his wife, after his death, she uh, renovated something here at, at the uh, Nombre de Dios, didn't she? That's correct. Uh, his second wife, he married her in Holy Name Cathedral in 1892 in Chicago. Uh, the Mass was presided over by one of the great American Catholics of the late 19th and early 20th century, Cardinal James Gibbons of Baltimore. Mm. And uh, when the general died, his wife, Amelia McLaughlin, she was of Irish Catholic background and also a very devout Catholic. She uh, renovated, restored, and landscaped uh, the shrine of the Our Lady of La Leche in memory of General Hardin. There are several plaques to that effect out there. Right. And at one time, there was a statue to his patron saint of St. Martin's. Saint Martin. we're, we're not sure what has happened to that uh, since it was uh, placed there in 1925. <laughs> but uh, many people uh, come here and they see the plaque and they don't know who this man is yeah. or why this Catholic chapel is dedicated to his memory. Your dissertation was amazing. I mean, there were so many facts about this man. You could you can make an incredible movie about him. He's also buried here at the National Cemetery in St. Augustine. Now, of all the research you did about this, this uh, general, what was the one thing that either moved you or shocked you or you found super interesting about him? of all the details? That's a difficult question. <laughs> he was a man of many parts. Uh, I think, I think as I'd have to answer that in part. If I addressed him as a soldier, it was the fact that despite his four wounds, he returned. And two, they had literally had given up on him. They, they felt he was he was it's, about to die. Yeah, it's good and each time he came back to lead his men. And that kind of loyalty and courage and resolve 
is overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Well, I thank you very much uh, for giving us a couple of minutes. Your dissertation was amazing. I couldn't tell people more to pick this book up. The people who've read it told me it was just, uh, couldn't put it down. It was just full of so many interesting anecdotes and points and things in history that they were not aware of, uh, especially about the Civil War. So uh, I thank you once again uh, for allowing us to speak a little bit with you. Jorge, it's been a pleasure. If I could close, though, I would want to say this man's life began in an age of covered wagons, free roaming Indians in the far west, steamboats, and it ended in 1923 at age 86 mm -hmm. in a time of automobiles, airplanes, silent the roaring movies, 20s. the roaring 20s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that alone, I think, uh, gives it a, a magical aura. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you again, my friend. Thank you. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank all of you for coming. It's an honor to speak to you, to you all. And we've actually had a couple that came back the second time, which I admire their, their courage. <laughs>